So let's read this op-ed by Lisa Robinson, the Pickering City Councilor. So it's titled, It Is Not Black and White. Now, full disclosure, this is the first time I've read this. So you're going to get my reaction in real time, if any. So it starts, we are amidst Black History Month, all caps. Celebrations plus more celebrations is all you hear. What's wrong with that? Politician after politician attempting to get Afro-Canadian vote. This is true. Hypocritically championing a people's contribution throughout history. Huh, okay. Like a little bit more context surrounding that thought. Uh, Continues to say, I remember in school being taught history, not black history, Hispanic, Euro, Arabic, Southeast Rim, Oriental, and let's not forget native, white, and or any other mix of races. I find it a little, hmm, anyways. Back then, it was history. Yes, mistakes were made, noted. The key here is why in this modern age are we so driven by color of skin instead of the human element? Lisa, 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 you can't just glaze over all the atrocities that happened throughout history. Mistakes were made? noted no that's that that's not gonna cut it i'm sorry so she continues and she says i say the human element as we are all people and the race to equality is not the celebration of one race over another in itself racist no black history month is about education and remembrance and of course some celebration absolutely But none of these things are being done with an overtone of racism. Unless, of course, you're Lisa. She continues and she says, and for those not of that race, hypocritical? Question mark. Now, before anyone goes getting offended, take off the offended cap and put on the thinking cap. I'm wondering if she ever put her thinking cap on. Like, it seems like she walks around with the offended cap on constantly. She may sleep in it, shower in it. I don't think it comes off by the way this reads so far, but I'm open-minded. Let's let's see what else she says. Someone not too long ago of status in the community and of color dare call me white privileged. <laughs> and then the next thing she says is really with a question mark. If that was not a racist statement, I don't know what is. Okay, well, clearly you don't know what a racist statement is. You should have just came out and said that. We could have enlightened you. Even people that look just like you could tell you what a racist statement is. She continues and she says, the same person is to champion equality across the board. But it seems that due to the limited intellect, I don't see why she has to insult the person, they confuse the meaning of equality with the attempt to denounce in the name of punishing everyone for their psychological insecurity stemming from race. This scares me. Oh, I'm sure. Anytime this person is just in the room with you, you're scared. Same elevator. You guys are walking in the same direction. You're probably terrified. I am not prejudiced nor discriminatory. (laughs) Listen, if you have to announce it, there's probably a reason why you feel like you have to announce it. People probably think you are because of the things you say, maybe some of your actions, and this is the reason you feel you need to announce it to everyone. I have friends of all nationalities and as an elected official. When you have to drop that, I have black friends too. Yeah, we know you're hiding something. I treat everyone equal and without bias. Good for you. Now back to being called privilege. How does the color of my skin make me privileged? See, this is what I'm saying. You need to go to the people that look just like you. They can explain to you how your skin color makes you privileged. I have had to work hard for everything I own. Of course you have. I endure economic hardships just like many reading this, like the many of all colors. See, the thing that Lisa doesn't understand is there's degrees to everything, okay? And your skin color, 
Although you've had to struggle, you've had to work hard. There are people that don't look like you, right? That have a different shade of skin, different texture of hair, right? That have struggled more just because of those things. She continues and she says, so much to that my own employer, city elect biasly and with extreme prejudice, cut my pay for 90 days for exercising my freedom of speech over a comment I made in regard to feeling like my counsel was treating me like a modern day slave. I don't even know the full context, but I know you are not being treated like a modern day slave. A slave works with no pay. I'm pretty sure you were getting paid. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Not a modern day slave, nothing like a slave, not even a second cousin, a relative of a relative of a friend who knew a friend who lived down the street. They're not even in the same province. Stop this. She continues. Now, I feel I was persecuted and punished and that my rights and freedoms were violated to the point that I felt discriminated. Of course you did, Lisa. Then, how is it that this person dares to tell me that I'm privileged? The problem we face is that in society, there is so much hate, starting with you, so much confusion, and so many people in positions that they are not fit to hold. Yeah, like yourself. For anyone to become upset or insulted over modern day slavery, this is all caps and quotations, the words is pure insanity on their part. Oh, I get it, Lisa. So you're telling people of color who have actual descendants, family members who have went through real slavery that we shouldn't feel a way over you calling yourself a modern day slave. That's interesting. Oh, and, and you're insulting us. You're calling us insane. Love it. A show of their limited intellect and you're calling us stupid and their psychological scarring due to misunderstanding and the lack of self-esteem. Now, <laughs> now let's leave that for another column. The point here is that we are all of all colors Again, all caps and in quotations, modern day slaves. We are led to believe that we have choices, that we have freedom and that we have rights. Look, this part here, I agree with what she's saying, but her messaging is absolutely horrible. In reality, we are all slaves of our own demise. Agreed. Try not going to work for a month. See how that affects your rights and freedoms. Agree to an extent. Now back to slavery and color. Why? Why couldn't she just leave that part alone? She was headed in the right direction for a second. First and foremost, slavery is not a white and black issue. It's not. Of course, there were other races that enslaved other races. Hell, black people enslaved black people. But when you are <laughs> as white as Lisa Robinson and you are talking about slavery not being a black and white issue again, just horrible messenger when you're talking about modern day slavery. Today, in today's modern world slavery, in the traditional sense, is still practice. Places like Saudi Arabia, some of the South Pacific countries, and in Africa itself. I wonder if she's ever been to any of these places, or is this just something that she's seen on social media? So then why are we celebrating Black History Month in Canada? Why are we so hung up on North American history and the historical trafficking of primarily African descent people that we have lost sense of time and period? Well, Lisa, it's not American History Month. It's Black History Month. So whether you live in Canada, Japan, England, Black history impacts all of us. It's not American History Month. The hell is wrong with this woman? Back in those days, society was very different. Today, we have come a long way. Even though slavery is practiced across the planet, we do not have other nations race history in Canada. What the hell is she talking about? Yes, we do. International Holocaust Remembrance Day. We just celebrated it. January 27th. See, this lady has no idea what she's talking about a simple google and by the way this whole op-ed is littered with grammar errors and spelling mistakes i mean take from that what you will 
She continues, or at least she tries to. Like the many that were brought from Latin America, the Orient, are we celebrating in segregation, not only reminding everyone of a very dark part in North American history? Also, are we not in the name of equality showcasing prejudice? If this is so, then why is it that we continue to do it? Could it be a political attempt to fool people? I could agree with that. I say this because if we acknowledge our differences between all the races, is that not prejudice in itself? No. Why would that be prejudice? You're just pointing out people aren't the same. Like we're all different and pointing out our differences in a positive way is not racist. Like true ignorance is pretending we're all the same. We're not. We're different. She continues. Why should the government have special programs for some races, almost excluding others as deeming this program exclusive to one race? You're a woman. You're a part of a marginalized group, just like people of color. So you have also been impacted by grants and by preferential hires, quotas. That you've benefited from this. Also, you're a white woman, white privilege. You've benefited from the exact same thing you're complaining about your entire life. You've benefited from this. Special black business programs, special black business loans. Now, to add more interest to this intellectual conundrum, we have been systematically declined education, declined business loans. Of course, they're going to try to do right and offer these things. When we speak of black and white, there are many shades of white. There are many shades of brown, yellow, red, black, and so on. As well, there is prejudice within the color spectrum. Then the question remains, how are we to truly express our equality when it comes to color differences? Is it beneficial for equality to be demanded by honoring indifferences? What if it was white history month? I knew that was coming. I absolutely knew that was coming. Would that not be seen as prejudice? The argument is, well, the rest of the year is white history month. I've never said that. Well, no, because history in general never had color. Just episodes of history make references to many conflicts and joint efforts of all color. Much like during the world wars, soldiers of all races and colors fought for our freedom. They sacrificed without thought or division based on color. It scares me that in this modern society, we have people that would dare support such division by celebrating differences of color. I support African Canadian contributions to this great nation. I do not support the all caps black history month statement any more than white privilege as both statements lack understanding and the intellect of the meaning of its intent. God made us in his image, an image that is not superficial, but one derived from one heart, one love. She quoted Bob Marley. We can't ever be equal as long as we allow color to divide us. Listen, I got to be honest with you. She made a couple points in here that I agree with. I believe that Black History Month is used as a tool. One month is not like put it this way. One month is not enough. So when she says she doesn't support Black History Month, I can understand that to an extent. This is something that should just be included in history. It shouldn't just be around February. Plus, we got a bunch of other stuff happening in February anyways. Valentine's Day, Family Day, like the focus is not even on black history. But as far as her overall tone, modern day slaves, she doesn't understand why there's, you know, grants designated to black businesses. She doesn't understand why there are loans for black businesses. Like clearly this is she doesn't understand how she has white privilege this is clearly a woman that really has no idea of the temperature of the world outside of her home 
and her immediate circle. She is totally disconnected. And the fact that she's a city councilor in Pickering, in Pickering, do you know how multicultural Pickering is? And this is this is our representation. Listen, they need to pull her aside. I'm not saying fire her, maybe not immediately. I'm not saying chastise her. I'm saying educate this woman because she don't she has no idea what's going on. And the fact that she would actually write this and have it published during Black History Month, you got to read the room. She is lacking 2020 vision. I don't know if she wears contacts, but she certainly needs glasses. And if she can't feel the temperature of the room, she's clearly wearing oven mitts. Let's help this woman because she needs it. That's all I got.